All right, so for these next couple of examples, we are going to have the same general setup that our first few Chapter 7 examples had, but we also have springs involved now. So there's going to be one additional source of energy to have to think about in the before situation and in the after situation. But just like with any of the other examples, we can draw the picture. So we have a block that is currently um, pressed into a spring. So before we thought about the problem, somebody squashed a spring down and, and um, basically loaded um, this, this mass into it. And when we let go of it, it's going to be able to go all the way up until at some point it reaches a maximum height where we've talked about maximum height way back in chapters two and three, that maximum height is where the velocity is zero um, in the vertical direction. And since this is only going up and down, um, this is the, uh, the full velocity is zero at that maximum height. So this situation before is when we are pushed into the spring already and we are not moving. Okay, this is one thing that a lot of students get confused about, but we already pushed ourselves into the spring before our energy problem started. Somebody added energy to the system that is not easily trackable by our Physics 125 tools. And so our problem starts when the spring is already compressed. And then the after situation is up here at that um, maximum height. And the question on our slide is asking us to find that maximum height. So just like with all of the other problems that we've done, we ask ourselves about before and after. We're going to ask about kinetic energy. We're going to ask about potential energy of gravity. And we're going to talk about potential energy of springs. Now, no different than any other um, idea in our setup, we are just going to ask a yes or no question to find out if we have that term or not. So in the before situation, we ask ourselves if we have any kinetic energy. Now just like with the entire chapter, this is going to be true the whole entire time, there's never meant to be a trick here. We either are given information about the speed or we are being asked to find it. We're not given any initial velocity. We aren't given an arrow, except for it's already in the process of being shot upward after the problem has started. So the arrow um, on our screen would be kind of here in the middle, that it's moving upwards. But in our before situation, we're not moving. If we decided that there was somehow a kinetic energy at the beginning, we've now made the problem unsolvable because we don't have that information. Instead, we have to recognize, and this is one of the toughest things that um, students have to think through with springs, is that the spring is not moving at the start of the problem. It's like being at a stoplight and you're really excited to get where you're going, and as soon as the light turns green, you're going to stomp on the gas. You still have an initial velocity of zero, even though you're about to move very quickly. Same situation here. The initial velocity is zero, but it's about to move very quickly. Okay, so we ask ourselves if we are higher at the beginning of the problem in the before picture. And we can see right here that we are not higher. And then this new question that has come up, it's not that complicated a question. It's just, are we attached to a spring? Are we interacting with a spring? And here we absolutely are. That spring is there. And so we use the new term that we introduced in the lecture slides, 1 half kx squared. For the after situation, we ask ourselves, do we have kinetic energy? And we are told that it stops. Um, in the picture, we're told that it stops momentarily at the peak. In the example, we're asked to find the maximum height. And that phrase maximum height is one that we have been working with that we need to continue to understand. And so that kinetic energy is also zero. We ask ourselves, are we higher at the end of the problem? Absolutely, mgh. And even if we weren't quite sure or we were just deciding to ignore the picture and make the problem harder for ourselves, the wording also asks us to find that height, which means that that height has to show up in the problem. And then at the end of the problem, when we are in the air, we are not interacting with the spring anymore. The spring did not go with us. It's not compressed at all. 
And so we get a term of zero there. And then separately, we ask ourselves, is there a work term? And we look for any additional push or pull information that we are told about. Now, again, this is really important. Somebody did push the mass into the spring, but we are not told what force they used, and all of that happened before our problem started. And so now the only forces that are acting on that mass at any point in the problem are gravity, but that's already being taken care of with the potential energy of gravity term, and the force from the spring, which although it is not constant, is still being taken care of properly by the potential energy of the spring term. So there is no additional force here uh, to worry about because in the wording we are also reminded that there's no friction or air resistance to look at here either. So this is what our yes and no questions should have led us to. And again, if we struggled with any of these, it's going to be worth re-watching this video and make sure that we understand um, why we answered these the way that we did. Before we get to the plugging in numbers part, it's worth making sure that we use all of the right units. So the mass that we're told about is 100 grams, but our regular unit of um, mass is the kilogram. And so that's 0 0.1 kilograms. Don't just skip those steps if you're struggling with it. Write out the unit conversion. It's a thousand grams and one kilogram. Make sure that you understand how to do that because that's a important skill that we've been working on since chapter one. The eight centimeters that we push ourselves into the spring, that eight centimeters, we need to recognize what that is. We're gonna get better at this as we do more spring problems, but that is the compression um, distance X. So x here is 8 centimeters, but centimeters is not our standard unit. We have to turn that into meters. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. You can make sure and do the full unit conversion on your page if you need to, but we get 0 0.08 meters for this. All right, and then the spring constant k, we'll just write down since we're making a list anyway, is 500 newtons per meter, and those are standard units for us. Okay, so now as always, we write down energy before. Plus work added. Equals energy after. And if we aren't writing this down, if we're just plugging the numbers in right away, I really do want us to understand that that's cutting corners and that's not preparing us to be able to handle these problems when we're in a more um, stressful environment like a test um, situation. Training ourselves to do the full complete setup every single time is going to make it so that when we get to the time for the test, we actually understand what it is that we're trying to do. Okay, so the energy before term. And because there's enough things going on, I won't write out all the zeros in every problem that we do, but I am going to write them out here because I want to make sure we understand we're taking this entire column and adding it together. Zero plus zero plus one half kx squared. We're looking at the work term, and because we said no, we can write a zero. And then for the after, we're taking this entire column and we're writing it out. Zero plus mgh plus zero. If it feels silly to write out all of those zeros, we need to keep in mind that the reason we're doing that is to make sure we know that we are always, in every problem that we do, looking at all of the possible places where energy shows up and not just trying to assume that once we have two or three terms that we're somehow finished. Okay, so if we look, this one ends up being pretty simple looking. It is our first spring problem. So once we drop all the zeros and start to plug in numbers, on this side we have 1 half, k here is 500, x we said was 0 0.08, and that x is squared. A lot of times student, students forget that squared, so don't forget to do that. And then on the right side here we have mass, which is 0 0.1, times g, which is 9.8, times our unknown height h. 
Okay. So we can plug in the numbers on the left side. And don't forget to square it. So on the left side, we have 1.6. 1. 1. And on the right side, we have 0. 0.98 H. So we can divide both sides by 0. 0.98. And so when we have 1.6 divided by 0.98, we're going to get 1.63. So 1.63 meters is our height. Okay. So with this um, problem, we see that the part that actually used the calculator was just down here for one or two steps. And that by taking our time and actually going through all of the setup, we train ourselves on what we're actually looking for. We're training ourselves on where these terms are coming from. And we understand the problem more than just going through the motions. So as always, you can rewatch these videos. Um, you can pause them once things make sense and try them on your own. And um, that's this first example. I'll see you in the next one.